Hello and welcome back or welcome to my channel. For those of you that don't know, my name is Lottie and I'm a second year medical student at the University of Leeds. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you my top tips for studying for medical school. I feel like over the past year and a bit, I've developed some new study techniques and definitely changed my method that I was using in school to be more appropriate for the high level of content that we receive in medical school. So I feel like I'm somewhat qualified to talk about this topic as a second year medical student, but I know there is still so much room for learning and I know that my revision method is going to be continuously changing and improving over the next few years. So that's actually one of the things I really want to stress at the beginning of this video is that it's so important that when you're learning how to revise for medical school, you're constantly open to trying new techniques, trying different apps, different flashcard apps, different past paper question apps and all these different things because you just don't know what's going to work for you and there's no point just sticking to one method that you have in your mind that you want to use and then risking missing out actually doing a lot better in an exam by using a different method. So testing out things like note taking, flashcards, space repetition, active recall is so important because that way you can find what really works best for you. But equally, it's super important that you stay true to yourself and you do what you feel really works for you and don't just try to do one study technique because everybody's telling you it's the best type. Obviously, there is evidence-based techniques that you can use such as space repetition and active recall but at the end of the day if that doesn't work for you that is not a reflection on your intelligence at all it just doesn't work for you so feel free to explore different methods and find what really works best for you so that's just a little bit of general advice um, and now we'll get into some more specific revision techniques for different areas of medicine. So I've decided to split this video up into general content, so like the stuff that you learn on a daily basis in general lectures, and then the anatomy content, and then any extra things like maybe statistics or ethics or like personal professional development, that kind of side to medicine. So I feel like that splits it quite nicely. I think a lot of courses are split in a similar sort of way. Um, so here's my tips for each of those and I really hope you enjoy this video. So to begin with the general content of medicine, this is like the body system stuff, so the cardiovascular system, respiratory system, any pathologies that you're learning about, um, muscles, bones, that kind of thing. So this is the stuff that you're going to be doing probably every day or every other day. It's a lot of content and it's very intense and it's so important that you try and study this as you go along. So waiting to cram at the end is just not feasible in a course like medicine where there's so much content. And I think it's quite important to get that into your head early on because quite often in school we get in that mindset that we can just learn everything and then study a week before the exam and cram and do completely fine. That's not the case when you're learning this amount of content. So little and often is the way to go. And the best way to do this is to start with things like past paper questions really early on. So this is gonna make a huge difference and there's so many great resources out there that have different past paper questions. So the one that I personally love to use and I would definitely recommend using is Past Test. So Past Test is an online question resource that you can moderate to fit your university and the year that you're graduating. So you put in the year that you graduate your university and then it adapts the questions accordingly. There's so many great features on pass test such as they're bringing in their own flashcards which is amazing. It's also got spot diagnosis pictures so you get a picture of a symptom or a sign and then you can try and guess the diagnosis as well as general content questions. So those are the best kind of resources to use early on and it's so important that you just go ahead and do these questions without delaying because it can be really easy to delay doing questions and I think in a way having a commitment to one specific resource and actually paying to use that resource much like it with a gym membership kind of forces you to go because you feel like you have to to make the most of it. So I'll put a link in the description to pass tests along with my discount code. As I said, try and do this early on um, so that you can get used to that kind of style of question that you're going to have in the exams. Especially in first year where you're not used to revising for medicine, it's really good to try and adapt your brain quickly. And on that note, using things like flashcards and testing yourself with flashcards, whether that be Anki or Quizlet, it's really beneficial to try and do this instead of 
trying to make loads and loads of notes. Obviously, if notes work for you, then definitely stick with your notes. I just know a lot of medical students love a good flashcard. And with that being said, don't be afraid to use someone else's flashcards. Again, in school, we get it in our head that we have to make all our own notes. But if someone is offering you their flashcards or their notes, then honestly, accept those with open arms and use them to compare to your own notes or flashcards. And that can be really, really helpful. And it just means that you get that reassurance that what you're putting in your notes or in your flashcards is what other people are doing as well and you can double check for any mistakes or errors that you may have made along the way. My next piece of advice is to review anything that you don't understand in the lectures after the lectures. By doing this or just taking a note during the lectures of things you don't fully understand so you can go back and review them, it prevents you from getting around to your revision and just not having a clue what you're reading about, especially with things like flashcards where the answers you've put are quite summarised. It can be very confusing if you don't fully understand the topic. So make sure you stay on top of understanding everything. and. In that sense, using online resources or textbooks is completely fine, but it's important to stress at this point now that you definitely don't need all the textbooks that are recommended. So I think I spoke about this a bit in my um, tips and advice for medical school video, is that they're going to tell you to buy loads of textbooks, but realistically, you're not going to need that many textbooks and all of the ones that are recommended you can find online or in libraries. So if there's something you're really struggling with in a particular topic, then try and find where you can get access to the textbook without needing to spend like £50 on a textbook that you're maybe going to use two or three times. Or alternatively, textbook share with your friends so you could split the cost of it and then just use that textbook with your friend group because then you're getting more use out of it and it's not really just a waste of money. However, with things like anatomy, buying textbooks or at least having one textbook can be really useful. Moving swiftly on to the anatomy section of this video. As I just said, having an anatomy textbook can be really helpful as you tend to get really good diagrams in the textbooks that you may not have full access to in your PowerPoint slides or online. So I really like to use the Netta's anatomy coloring book. I think it's great. Personally, I don't colour in it because I know I would just spend way too long trying to perfect my colourings instead of actually looking at the pictures themselves and the diagrams. However, I do love the diagrams in that textbook and I think that they're really great for revising off and they also have these really good table summaries of everything you need to know about that muscle, like its innovation, its origin, its insertion. It's got everything, which I think is extremely useful. There's lots of other great textbooks as well, so just make sure that you do a bit of research and see which kind of diagrams you like the most, whether that be like the Netta's Anatomy, which is just black and white so that you can color it in yourself, or maybe you prefer an already colored in textbook. So that's completely personal preference. And with that being said, as I mentioned for the general content of medicine, much like with general content, it's really important to stay on top of anatomy and understand the clinical relevance of it as opposed to just accepting all the information. It can be very easy with anatomy for it to go in one ear and just out the other because there's so many big words, there's so much going on, and the best way to actually understand it is to know the clinical relevance and try and gain an understanding of the bigger picture and how it all links together. And that will make a big difference once you get to the end of the topic so that you can piece things together and do a big review instead of just being really confused and overwhelmed by everything you've just consumed and loads of Latin words that don't really make any sense to you. And again, the Latin can actually be very helpful to break down into chunks and understand the words themselves and the different sections of the words because quite often they tell you a lot about an area of the body, where it is on the body or maybe a diff like a pathology um, within the body. So that's another thing to consider if you think that knowing the actual origins of the words themselves might be quite helpful to you. And finally, with anatomy, it's really important that you focus on diagrams and actual pictures of the anatomy itself, as this is often what's tested in the exam, so things like spot tests where they put a pin on an area and you have to say what it is. So ways to go about this are if you maybe if you enjoy drawing and making notes, you might want to actually draw the diagrams and label them yourself. Or there's the Netta's Anatomy colouring book where you can just colour it in and not have to worry about the drawing. Or alternatively, if that doesn't sound appealing to you at all, Anki has some great features where you can just cover 
up the different labels and then go through it that way. Alternatively, you can use resources like Pass Test where you can go through the different spot diagnosis and spot tests and that's a really helpful tool as well. For the final part of this video, I just want to touch on some of the extra content that you learn in medicine, so things like research, methods, statistics, maybe different types of professionalism, all of that extra stuff that isn't really general content, isn't really anatomy, but covers another percentage of your course. So if you're a medic, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. If you're an aspiring medic, you have all this to look forward to. So the best way to go about this is to split it up into your different subjects and then really think about what can actually be tested. So things like research methods, different, different models that may be used, different definitions, and once you've worked out what can actually be tested, just try to condense that information and revise that. Trying to learn absolutely everything about concepts can be quite difficult. It's obviously it's crucial to understand the concepts and do the work as you go along, but in the actual exam and when it comes to revision, key definitions, key models, what the models are used for, key research methods, what the research methods are used for, and the same with things like statistics is definitely the best way to go about this. So personally, I like to use a flashcard deck for this with all the key information in so that I can review that. And then I like to accompany this by looking at some of the models and diagrams on pictures. So I have a one note with some of those diagrams and models in, and that just really supports my learning as it's easier to remember it if you're actually seeing a picture of the model. So that is my summary of different ways to revise in medical school and some of the methods that I think work the best. Obviously the main message from this is that you need to do the kind of revision methods that work for you. I think there's a very big misconception in a way within the study tube world that there is only two methods at work and that is active recall and space repetition but ultimately you need to do what works for you and you need to enjoy what you're doing so if you'd rather spend hours making pretty notes or paper flashcards and that works for you then that's much better than spending hours doing space repetition active recall if one you're not enjoying it and two it's not working for you Obviously, pretty notes are amazing, and if you enjoy doing them, that's great, but at the same time, try not to spend 24 hours a day making your medical notes, because it's really important that you enjoy the other aspects that medical school has to offer, such as joining societies and making friends and getting out into the city that you're living in. So try to make the most of these years, and the best way to go about that ultimately is to test different revision methods, see the one that you enjoy, that works for you, that is efficient and that you feel like you're actually getting wet somewhere with it. So I really hope you took some tips from this video and found it helpful. If you have any other tips, please do put them in the comments. I would love to hear them. I'm still early days in medical school and have a long way to go with my revision techniques. So any advice would be much appreciated. And I really hope that if you're in medical school, you succeed with your revision and you do all the best in your exams. And if you're an aspiring medic, then all the best with your A-levels or IB or exams and fingers crossed for medical school. And thank you so, so much for watching and I hope you have a lovely day.